Today I am going to discuss Chapter 4 of the book CCNA Collaboration CICD 210-060 Official Certificate Guide. The topic I am presenting today is Getting Familiar with CME Administration. Okay. You have been doing the labs before the lecture, so that will actually help you to understand the concept here. How the um, Call Manager Express or Communication Manager Express which is the cut down version of the full fledged communication manager or call manager works. So that's the agenda for today's chapter. So firstly, we start with how we connect. Okay. Call manager or communication manager express is what? It's the router, right? So you know that we can connect the router to manage it, to configure it in number of ways. The first option is if you are in an out of band management that means you are physically connecting your um, party your teratram hyper terminal the third party software to manage the emulation software to manage the router you can connect physically if you are so close in the same comms room your management pc in your router in the same room then you can do the console port so this is the initial configuration record anywhere you do okay if you do the initial configuration via console port, then you can do the management IP there. There is an IP of the router and then you can do the in-band management, which is telnet. Telnet is over the internet. You remotely managing that router because router has got an IP address. An IP address can be reached via remote connection, via telnet. The issue with the telnet to come with the command interface of the router is secure. It's plain text. Anything you are configuring is not encrypted. That means anyone want to tap in can find out what you have been configuring. So what is the solution of this plain text way of managing the router from a remote place? That's called SSH access, secure shell. Secure shell performs the same function as the telnet. That means you are allowing remotely to manage the router, but some secure communication with a heavy dose of encryption. Now it's encrypted. So, encryption is ensuring the confidentiality. It's like that. Everything is in front of you, but it's gibberish. No one can make sense straight away of that gibberish characters. It's all random characters. Not like um, we are having a class. We are having a class. If someone can read it, that, that he or she could make sense. Oh, the class is going on. That guy is in the school, so he's not at home, right? So, I can rob off his house because he's in the school. But if... You find, you, are an, you as an attacker, you as an intruder, you find the same information. The meaning of the same information, you can't make sense because it's in random characters like 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, Z, 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 B, B, C, C. But if the authorized people can decrypt it, the meaning would be the same. We are having a class. But as an attacker, you can't because it's encrypted. And SSH ensures that. So you remotely is still coming, but it doesn't make any sense straight away. If you have a sophisticated software, you can decrypt it, then that is another issue. Make sense? So these are the three ways we can come to the contact of the common line interface of the call manager express. Call manager express is the router in our case, because in the router we have the voice always, and we can manage the router as if it's like a voice device. Okay. That's the point that we discuss. What is the idea of call manager express in the other lectures? Now, what is the next thing you do to support a magic of the voice over IP configuration? Cisco developed a telephony service configuration mode. So far, we have been known the interface mode, configuration mode, router mode, and so on and so on. Now, because what we are doing in this course, voice over IP. So for that, we have a special mode called telephony service configuration mode. How we can enter it? How we can deep dive in it. So you go config T and then you type the telephony service, press enter, and you see the config telephony. So that's how you can come into the telephony service configuration mode. So most troubleshooting commands are performed from the CLI command line interface. Now you have a question is it I have to type in the router? Can I do managing this router via web interface, via graphical user interface? Yes. In the latest series of routers, you would have that option, but the routers we use in this lab, we can't do that. Okay. So most troubleshoot commands 
can be performed even though you could have this graphical user interface option or provision in the router so you have been using the lab then this is very limited feature you can not do everything which you could do using CLI CLI whatever is possible with the router you can do everything all the commands are ready you just a learning curve to know the commands you need in graphical user interface you can't do everything you want it's a limited things you can do that's the difference so one of the most common verification and troubleshooting commands used with common uh, um, communication manager express is show e phone registers say for example you already have your phone connected to the switch gives you power turns up the light on switch connects to the router router is properly configured and you are expecting the registration process that we discussed last lesson right we discussed that phone boots power up bscp vlan we discussed that right so you're expecting registration but it's not happening it's taking a long okay so how you can in the meantime you're waiting what you can do you can give this command show if on register to see is there any issue is being registered or it's not appearing so in this outcome you can see show if on register you can see the mac address of the phone and the phone number and so on see the number is 1005 and you see this active or is registered or unregistered is idle you can see the what codec it's being used remember that if you use codec the quality could be compromised but it is not taking that much bandwidth if your codec is different then your recipient codec will not work because you are not talking to the same way so codec must match right so this is the outcome of the command show if on register this is a troubleshooting command to manage Common uh, commercial manager express using a graphical user interface. Now we mentioned CLI to do it. What you can do? Many small office they don't have Cisco who is our guru like you, right? They don't have it. This is small business, like maybe twenty stuff. They don't have that high end routers, so they have a small end or low end routers which works with the graphical user interface because that's. It cannot do many things, but it is user friendly. The routers we have been using here, it can do so many things, but it is it demands a huge learning curve to configure it to know these things. The small uh, offices doesn't have; they don't have that much expertise because of the budget they have. But they have an all-in-one administrator. The administrator who configures the router, the same administrator is the telephone administrator. The same administrator is the Microsoft guru. Like one person is everything. Right. This is the case of most of the many uh, small offices. So many small offices use an all-in-one administrator whose knowledge is spread across many different technologies, Linux, Microsoft, everything. Okay. So he can or she can do everything by command line of the Cisco specific domain. So for make their life easy, there is a in a low end in a low budget router that is a graphical user interface. You click, 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 you do the job instead of command line. But not as I mentioned, not everything. You could do in common line. So that is a compromise. You can't achieve everything, but you at least can make your life easy. Similarly, some offices use consultants or contract network administrator to manage the network, providing an easy to use GUI allows one of the more technically inclined users at the office to take care of the day to day administration, regular operation, not a troubleshooting thing, but at least, okay, it's up and line, it's up and line. If there's a problem, they'll call someone else. Finally, the point and click of a graphic interface can be more efficient at times than typing configuration. These are the benefits. These are the motivation why we should have a graphical user interface instead of command line interface. When we are saying, when we are claiming command line can do everything, then why you are talking about gra graphical? Because it's making our life easy. Because we, you can expect every um, every type, small, matter size, medium size, everyone would have the expert. An expert engineer salary is $100,000, whereas the man in the all in one expert person has $100,000, but he does everything Microsoft, Linux, security, you know, catching website, web administrator, same. Instead of five person of $100,000, it's one person of $100,000. He doesn't do everything in a that detail, he's just daily uh, maintenance person. So, for that sort of reason, we need a graphical user interface. So two primary tools are used today. When we talk about graphical user interface, there are two ways. One is called integrated call manager express GUI. Say so it's in the router. There is a provision in the router. 
you can configure something which will allow to go over the wave interface using console you can always do command line interface you can manage that's no problem right we understand that thing but if you tick something or if you configure something in the router then by the IP address of the router you can come to the wave interface and then you can click 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 that is one option or there is a third party software in Cisco's case the third party software's name is called CCP Cisco Configuration Pro uh, Professional Cisco Configuration Professional so what happens like a Cisco IP communicator you double click and a software open it's a software form CCP is a software Okay, and then it automatically detects the router IP address and this machine on the same LAN. Then using that software, you manage the router instead of web interface. This is the two options of graphical user interface. Got it? Okay. And the third option is common LAN. In common LAN, you have three options: telnet, SSH, or console. So this is so far we have discussed how you manage the call manager express, either common LAN way or graphical way. Now, when we spoke about the integrated CME GUI, the integrated CME GUI is a powered by HTML and JAR files loaded in the flash of the CME router. Why we are so fussy about the 2811 series routers? The routers you see at the back, these are 2811. Thicker, have a look at the back. This is thicker than your 2811. Why? Because it's two RU, two rack unit size. And it has got more power, it has got more DSP, but this is the second generation routers which comes with only a router and switching feature enable iOS. It doesn't have call manager express feature of the iOS, it doesn't have it. The 2011 routers have the iOS which could be used for voice, for security, for routing and switching. It's like a many in one sort of iOS. This is only single purpose routing and switching. It cannot be done for security, it cannot be done for voice. In those sort of routers, in the flash, where you know that from Cisco learning, where the iOS is located in the flash of the router, right? The router doesn't have a hard disk. What he has is a memory, and the memory is the flash. Okay. So in the flash, there is a jar file and there is some HTML synchronization. So if you Download the tar package of the files from the Cisco FS. Tar, it's a compressed file, Linux. Because what is it? This iOS is a Unix based operating system, right? So in Unix, the compressed file, the zip file is called tar. So what we have done, we already have downloaded this tar package from the Cisco website to make the router. Router is by default a router. We are making it to give us something extra. So how we are making it? That's what the process they're saying. You go to the Cisco website, you assuming you have a bank support contract. This support contract is called Cisco Connection Online CCO account. So I have a CCO account. So I downloaded it, extract the files in the flash of the router. So it's a tar file, then you have to unzip it, extract it, right? And then what is it? With minimal command line configuration, what is the minimal command line? Assign the IP address of the router, be the same network, or go to the web interface, that's it. So this is the process. You can make a router accessible or manageable for the purpose of voice configuration graphically you download the tar file you extract in the flash and you configure you you open the http function of the router you go by the http of the router ip address admin admin is the password whatever password you said that's it done boom with minimal configuration so how it looks instead of common line interface then it will look like this cisco call manager express you reason your password, you give this, then you configure this. See, on the left hand side menu, you can see that it's not so many things you can configure, only limited things. But for whom? For the all in one, all in one administrator, not for an expert administrator. You are level two. The all in one person is the level one person, right? Someone is level three, he just knows maybe a specific thing of the voice, not everything even. Even narrow. His his brain, his expertise, even narrow. But what he knows, he knows solid. So that's how it would look after you configure it. Although the integrated CV is not pretty by today's standard, it doesn't look so good, right? In today's standard, in, in Juniper, in uh, Huawei, and even in your home router, right? Dodo or iPrime or sort of the home router, $70 mark router, looks even fancier than this, right? Obviously, because this 
Cisco never had a graphical user interface based management interface. But Martin is coming, Juniper is coming, he's coming. So everyone says, oh, I don't like to remember that funny comments. Click, click, click. Competition, they're coming. So that's what the technology. Even though CME GUI is not ready by today's standard, it is functional. It works. Which enables you to handle most core functions of CME. Adding, changing phone configurations, adding phone numbers, the message, you know, the message of the day, like Cisco Boy phone. You can do that sort of things. Adding someone's phone number, Alex's phone number is 555, Kazin's phone number is 101. You can do these sort of things easily here, clicking. Modifying the document, configuring hand groups, and so on. Now, that was the integrated way. What is the CCP way? What is CCP, by the way? I already gave you a little idea. Cisco focused the integrated CME GUI on configuring only the telephony aspects of the CME router. Only the telephony aspects. When graphical user interface, you would have a thought process. You can think of, oh, yes, that R file may help you to configure the um, interface Z00, inter, uh, SCR, NAT, no. That, that tar file you downloaded from Cisco, extracted from the flash, that thing is only for the voice sort of thing. You cannot configure NAT, you cannot configure ACL over the cloud because what you are doing, you are using the fast Ethernet address which is connected to your PC as a LAN. You are using like your home router, right? Like your home router is 192.1.1.1, your number is 192.1.10, something arbitrary, whatever. And you go 111 IP, you can manage everything. It's not that, it's just for voice thing. So, Cisco focused the integrated GUI on config only the telephony aspects of the CV router. To solve the problem, it created the CCB, Cisco Configuration Professional, to configure all major aspects. Using CCB, you can do the NAT, ACL, DSCP, some other things. Make sense? So, GUI can't do everything. GUI just, that tar file has only voice information. But CCP, with using CCP, a third party software like, like the CIPC, you use software phone, CCP, you can do all router things on graphical. Like intrusion prevention, like virtual private network, router, firewall, everything. Like a wizard. You can download the latest version of the CCP software from the Cisco website free of charge. CCP is roughly a 200 megabyte institution on a local PC. So it is 200 megabyte on a local PC. Cisco has also created CCP configuration professional express. This 200 megabyte file is to be installed on your local PC, but the CCPE is to be on the flash of the router, which is much lighter version. It's not that big 200 file, 200 megabyte file, it's a lighter version. But the difference is, as it is lighter, CCP Express only focuses on configuring basic network connections, firewall, network address translation, not IPS, not VPN, not unified, you know. So that is a catch. You don't, use, you don't use some 200 meg of your local PC, you use some 5 meg maybe or 10 meg maybe in your router's flash, but then you lose other features which you could with the full bone. Do you get what I'm coming from? So that's the way CCP Express works. It's not configured, it's not able to configure Cisco unified communication features. So don't even try to download the small file to save local PC if your intention is to configure the voice thing, because it doesn't do it. It's, it's written in the left, red line at the end. If you install CCPE in your flash of the router, you cannot do the unified communication. That means you're missing all the voice things, which is your intention here. CCP, before you can add a device, you must configure it with these four things. Before you can add a device, hot device, this computer, it has got the CCP. So how you can reach device from the router? You need a reachable IP address, level 15 username and password on the router. You should have some authentication. Who has got the CCP store can come to the router and ask, I'm going to manage you. Will you give the key of your door, everyone? So you will give the key to your partner, your parents, your friends, who you like. So that's like that, username and password. Oh, you are Maria, my girlfriend, you come. That's fine, you're good. You're my dad, you come, you're good. 
username, that username, my friend, password, whatever you share with him or her. So that's how you have to, that, that's the configuration, right? Now, integrated HTTP services. On the router, you should turn on that service. By default, this is a security hole. If you don't use the web interface of the router, and unnecessarily you turn on the HTTP service of the router, Intruders will use that unless unused service of the router to come and attack you, right? So by default this turn off. But now we try to use it. If we don't use it, we cannot use the CCP. So integrate HTTP services enable the CCP utility to discover the CV router. How the router would know that there is a device which could be in the same land and I should give access to it. The HTTP service allows that. That's the percent Local authentication for tenant and SSA. CCB logs into CMV router to apply configurations based on the GUI introduction. So these are the basic things we have to do before we move the CCP way of graphical user interface. So what we just mentioned in the last slide, this is how we configure it. Let's look at this, meaning how we configure it. Config T is to go config mode. And you are setting the router IP address in this example 172.30.177. That's the IP address of the router. Then you say no shutdown. That interface cannot be shut down. If, he, if I say I'm going to give you this and then I don't talk, then how I can give? So I would be provisioned and I have to turn on. So no shut does that. You know the idea of no shut. And then the next command is authenticating the username and password. So username is new. The name of the user is new, privilege is level 50, highest privilege, and the password for him is Cisco. See, that's how we configure it. And then we, we turn on the HTTP service, and we turn on the HTTPS service. The top one is only HTTP. The second line is HTTPS. Okay, secure. And then you configure the telnet. You know how to configure the telnet and SSH. So that's what we did. That's exactly they said to configure it, and that's the configuration syntax. Once you have done this, initially open CCP. This is the software. Double click it. It prompts you to configure a community. Give any name, test or Melmon or whatever name. What is community? It's a group of devices you want to manage using CCP. Under a community, you can have multiple PCs. And from those multiple pieces, you can manage the same router or number of routers. So that's the community. By default, CCTP attempts to connect router using telnet and HTTP. That's what we turn them on. Telnet, SSH, HTTP, we turn them on. By simply clicking the connectivity secure checkbox, you now use the SSH and HTTPS. After you connect to the same router, CCP runs a discovery process. Because you turn on the, remember I said, HTTP server will allow you the router to discover which other devices are in the LAN. So once you connect the physical the router, CCP runs a discovery process which identifies the router hardware, software, and interfaces and modules. After this process completes, you are able to configure the device. So although CCP has many configuration options available relating to routing and security, system, remember GUI, integrated GUI would not be able to do any routing and switch configurations graphically, would not be. CCP will, but CCP will be on routing and switching, but no telephone. Three differences, right? Graphical user interfaces, which is integrated by the top file, is just for telephony purposes. No other thing, no ACL, no net, nothing. CCP can do both telephoning and all routing and switching. CCP E, express version of the CCP, will be in the router slash, but at the cost of only the routing and switching, no telephony. Yeah, we explain that. So although CCP has many configuration options available relating to routing and security, we we'll primarily focus in this course obviously on independent communication. Because that's the course we're doing. So when you initially expand the unified communications folder under the configuration section of CCP, you see only one available options, unified communication features. Only one option appears because you haven't yet configured the CMA router to CMA features. Why only the UC coming features? Why only the UC route features coming? Because that's the default one. But if you trigger the others, it will pop up the other ones. 
So that's what it looked like. So you go there, you see this, and see that unified communication features. Only under unified communications is this coming up. But remember, we said that there are so many things: call manager, uh, unified presence, unity. Yeah. But it's not popping up. What is popping up? The default one. Only the communication, the major, the main basic thing. But if you allow the other features on CCP, it will come up with unity, unified presence, and so on and so on. <clears throat> so you can configure this. Most small business choose this option. CCP configures router as a standard CME system, call manager express. You can also have the CCP as a gateway. Remember when we need the gateway? You can create, you can use the gateway feature of the router when you are connecting a voice over IP network to a PSTN network, some LAN phones, old telephony. LAN phones doesn't have back address. This side of the IP phone has got back address because they are network connected. So how you convert each or how you can talk? You need a gateway. So router can be featured as a gateway as well. And it can be featured as well for a SRST, which is the redundancy purposes for. If you choose the gateway option shown in this figure, you have the ability to select three sub options. None configures the router as a voice gateway. If you don't do anything, none will be just the router as a voice gateway. Doesn't support IP phones. So if you don't do anything, you know the options, if you configure unified features and then these, you have these three options. If you if you come up with a gateway, right? You have these three options. If you don't do anything, if you choose this none, then router will be just a gateway. It cannot connect any IP phones. Okay. If you do Cisco Unified SRST and Cisco Unified SME, enable the IP phones to use the semi router as a payover device. So these are the options. Now, what are the best options if you want to configure the Converge Express graphically by our CCP? Application development and operating system development get out of sync and cause compatibility issues. This is an application, right? And router is an operating system. So the version of this application, the software, and the version of the iOS, sometimes they get converted out of the sync. Oh, that version, that worked for that version of the application. So it's not always good to upgrade your iOS when you are not synced with the current version of the application. So you would imagine, oh, I have downloaded the version 20 of the iOS. So the version 70, the latest version of the application, the CCP will work, will not. Because someone may not have done the syncing in between these two. See what I'm coming from? So with that, you, we, we tried this CCP. Basically, Windows 7 and 8 machines. Windows 7, Windows 8, Windows 10. This is CCP. It cannot run on Mac, on Linux. This is just for Windows machines, this software, right? So if you try to use in Windows 10, sometimes on Windows 10, the latest version of CCP may not be working as optimized to it as it did for Windows 7 and 8. That's what they're saying in the first line. And this is a Java-based program. Remember, it's a jar file, tar, and blah, blah. So Java has also has some compatibility issues, and we sometimes find ourselves in the situation where applications such as CCP requires an older version of the Java. You uploaded or downloaded the latest version of the CCP, and you already upgraded to the latest version of Java, they don't talk. So it's sometimes good to use latest version of CCP with maybe the some older version of Java. That's what they're saying here. One of the best practices of advice I can give you is this, build a virtual machine to run CCP. Do not use CCP on a really host machine. Build a virtual box environment, Oracle virtual box, VMware, and make a Windows 7, Windows 8 machine there, and then you run them. Doing so means that you can make a customized Windows install that has exactly the settings and software needed to make it work with each application and which can be logged down so that it cannot be updated and drag those settings. You are not, you're not compromising with your host machine, you are just playing with your virtual machine and you get the maximum benefit out of it. So this is the config, once you have do the basic initial configuration, this is the confirmation screen. Are you sure you are happy with this? You want to save it, you apply, 
This is the screen that screen is. This is fantastic for two reasons. First, it enables you to verify the CCP is performing the configuration you want, you are checking that what you expected from this system is doing it. You haven't done any mistake. And it also enables you to learn the commands that CCP uses to configure the same thing. Once you confirm it, it will show you the commands here. Once you configure this or confirming in the screen, it will show the command line commands in graphical user interface. In the most modern routers, you do diagnostic thing. When you click ping trace route, it also does you know the command line thing and the side screen, right? Same thing here. So this is the reason, two reasons, configuring the confirmation screen is better. Now this is how you can manage your um, this is how you can manage your CME. That's the chapter four of the book. Okay. Now we are also touching in the same chapter IP voice packet size. So how different codecs? Remember we said codecs is an important factor. If your codec of the router is different than our recipient's codec, they wouldn't talk to each other. So how different codecs affect the size of the IP packets are sent across the network. Choosing a codec depends on the type of environment the phones will operate in. You must be careful when you wish to use voice over IP in a low bandwidth situation. So if you if you're in a 10 megabit per second infrastructure network and if you don't compress your voice communication, it will be buffering. And if your conversation buffers, you feel distorted. And if you are, you're breaking up, you cut the line, right? So be careful in that sort of system. So if you need to run the voice over the wide area network, it's critical to know the size of the voice packets to determine how your network will scale. You should be able to calculate how much bandwidth a particular IP voice packet consumes so you can properly engineer your network for the approximate number of simultaneous calls you are anticipating. So if you know you have 20 staffs, your speed of the network is that much, if you did a simultaneous call, how much traffic will pass, if you know that information, the fact, then you can design the network properly. In calculating packet sizes, there are some pocket packet components whose size is static and never changes. When you are calculating the size of the packet, there are something in the packet which is fixed, like the delay. Some, some delays are fixed, right? So other components are variable and can be manipulated depending on the codec used to change the size. So the following sections will present some static and variable services that change the size of the packets. So we call this voice packet failure. Sample times of audio streams is typically the most correct state sample size between 10 milliseconds to 30 milliseconds. Most correct to process the data it takes 10 to 30 milliseconds. Codex bandwidth use, let's say we are using G7711 codec with a sample size of 20 milliseconds. Using the Nyquist calculation, the codec bandwidth rate is 64 kilobit per second. So that's what they're calculating. How you can calculate using these parameters? I'm not going detail here because if I can, if I just read it, you'll not understand it. So I would expect you go to the slides. It's clearly defined. I, I, the way I wrote this slide is clearly defining in how you can calculate the payload, voice payload. And now, again, another information which makes the size of the packet different. So, that is a layer 2 header information that depends on the layer 2 methods you are using. What method of layer 2 encapsulation you are using? So, if you are using PPP or you are using frame relay, that is also making the size of the layer 2 header different. Then, you got the layer 3 header information. So, what is the size of the IP? Is it UDP? If it is UDP, it has to be UDP because it's a real-time traffic, right? So, it is a fixed thing, 8 bytes in UDP, right? And then, it uses RTP and RTCP for uh, control. So, how many bytes? So, what happens in a special case? If you want to make sure the security of the packet transfer, IP set, then you add another payload. If it is to a tunnel, then you add another payload. So it's like that. Okay. So if you was in a demonstration, like it's a winter time, uh, I'm just putting a polo and I'm walking in the street. What I'll feel, I'll feel cold, right? But if I put a 
jacket or jumper or sweater, I will not feel that cold. But what is the cost here? The cost is I have to purchase another outfit and then I have to put it on. It needs a time to put another jacket and if on top of jacket I put a hoodie, another time, processing time, right? And another cost. So that's how it is. If you put a security, that many buys. If you go by the tunnel, again another buys. If you do the ampere thing, another buys. So this is how we mentioned the boys packet. Size is not steady. Some information is fixed. Processing time it's fixed for some certain amount of data. But if you add these op options, then your packet is getting bigger. If packet is getting bigger, your network is very slow network. The quality of the network is bad. So that's what we are coming out. So then <coughs> with this understanding, we are now giving you an example. So if it is a packet per second, 1000 packets per one second, and packets per second is 1000 by 20, and packets per second is 50, you know. So packets per second, sample size here is 20, 20 seconds, in the 20, you know the payload is 20 millisecond, 1000 packet of 20 millisecond passing, so packets per second, 20 second passing, 1000 packets, so packets per second is 50, right? In a second, 50 packets are going. So let's use the example for boys packet size of 220 bytes. So 160 bytes of 220 bytes is in the payload and plus 60 bytes in the Ethernet and IP overhead. This is the breakup of the 220, 160 plus 60. And our calculated 50 packets per second to come up with bytes per second. So then you find that in a byte per second totally we got 11,000 bytes per second. 1,000 packets by sample size, sample is 20 second. So per second is 50 packet. And then we have a voice packet of 220 bytes, bytes. Each packet is 20, 220 bytes, 160 plus 60. And we can go 1,000 packets. So that calculation comes like 220 by times 50 at that many bytes per second. So 11,000 bytes per second you have to transfer in this example. 11,000 bytes. Now if you go bits per second, again, if you don't want byte measurement by but bits, so this is the calculation in that way. So 11,000 bytes times 1 byte equal to 8 bits, so 88,000 bits per second. That means 88 kilobit per second using uncompressed G711 codec over the Ethernet. 82 kilobits if the codec is G711, 88 kilobits per second. Okay. You can use this information to help determine how many voice streams you never can. So if in a second you need minimum 88 kilobit per second for one, then how many stuff you have, and based on that you can design your network. That I need a bandwidth of 10 gigabit. I need a my bandwidth is 100 is sufficient. User is 20, I need 100. User is 200, I need 10 gigabit, and so on and so on. Got my point? How you can design your network? What is your requirement? So this is the way you calculate. So now you have examples, example 1 information, the codec that we have chosen uses a sample time of 30 millisecond. Now it's a different example, not 20 millisecond, it's a 30 millisecond. And the codec bandwidth of 8 kilobit per second. Last time the codec bandwidth was 88, now 30 millisecond and 8 kilobit per second. Our packet will be traversing all Ethernet networks. The packet also be tunneled. So Ethernet, what is the Ethernet speed? 10 megabit per second or 100 megabit per second. If it is legacy, 10 megabit. If it is fast Ethernet, 100 and then if it is using tunnel that means you are adding again with this so with that these are your solutions so you calculate this okay and now you have another case study so this is how you can develop your design of the voice network so how to calculate the maximum number of simultaneous call your network could handle so as you now from the last couple of examples you found out oh, we need if we use that codec and if this is that uh, compression and if, if our network is that much speeding slow or high speed network whatever then you calculate how many um, simultaneous calls if you have 20 people at one time maybe because your network is not that fast maybe at one time you can allow five simultaneous calls the other ones will be dropped. If you are having fast or very high um, uh, heavy uh, internet or network, maybe at one time you can do 30 simultaneous calls. Okay. So that's the thing. So that's this chapter is about.
in here and now what happens this is another interesting thing because of the quality right because it's all IP it's all in the internet it's all the data we're talking here data it's not anything analog it's here digital so it has got a cache it has got a buffer so it the DSP digital signal processor can understand your accent my accent and keep it like cookie in the web the web server you are visiting again and again every time you don't request as soon as you enable the cookie it's coming for the buffer you already been visited so it does not request again it just gets you the information yeah same here so one method of real-time transfer protocol which is to ensure the quality is called CRTP so another great bandwidth of saving utility is voice activity detection when using the bandwidth you are not talking you're not talking say hello hello how are you hello how are you hello and how that is a pause right you don't feel it computer can get it because that's what they're programmed for so there is a difference millisecond nanosecond there is a pause so how many seconds milliseconds nanoseconds you haven't said anything that bandwidth that time can be given someone else who desperately need that i'm not using this but he is looking for this so I give what I didn't. So the activity detection is a bandwidth saver. So voice activity detection monitors the voice conversion that is taking place. When it detects silence of the RTP stream, it stops transferring RTP packets across the wire. You might be surprised to learn that anywhere from 35 to 40 percent of the conversation is complete silence. We talk a lot, but out of what we've been talking. If we could measure, okay, how many characters, how many, how long you have been talking, how many sentences, is found experimentally, 35 to 40 percent of the conversation is actually silence. Like this, we're in live class, but I had a 10 second silence. Okay, so band is not enabled by default. You have to make it enabled. Then it can be bandwidth saving. That's all for this chapter.